This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. <laughs> Yo, what's up? It's me, Samuel L. Jackson. Meow. Let me tell you guys about the most pointless movie I have ever watched in my entire life. It is a movie so dumb, so void, so empty, that there is almost nothing about it worthy of your time on this planet. A movie that makes me so angry because I gave it my attention and my money and it gave me nothing for it. And instead, it took away a part of me, a part of my soul, and it crushed it into a worthless pile of dust. This is what I experienced when I watched Pause of Fury, the Legend of Hank. Now you might be asking, Nick, why are you so mad about this movie? What is this movie? I've never heard of it. Count yourself lucky. While DreamWorks was absolutely thriving in 2022 with amazing and stunning movies, and Disney was just kinda there doing its own thing, and Illumination was over here getting lucky with meme culture having their movie thrive financially, Nickelodeon was over here stumbling into the room like a corpse. It's a miracle that this movie was made for people to see with functioning eyes. It's an ugly, broken piece of media that me and my friends Weston and Hoover saw in a movie theater around other human beings, and we were the only human beings to watch it because God, did it fail at the box office. And I mean, who was going to watch it? This was the trailer. <laughs> Motherfucker, cocker spaniels going on here. I like your respect. Pause of Fury, the legend of Hank. Time to finish this. Yeah, that's a real trailer for a real movie. Seeing that, you're probably like, what is this movie about? What's the plot? What's the story? Tell me the story, Nick. Can you can you please tell me the story? Okay, fine, fine. I'll tell you the story. Do you remember Blazing Saddles, the Mel Brooks satirical comedy with important lessons on racism <laughs> that the Library of Congress deemed so good that it's preserving in the National Film Registry? Well, this movie is Blazing Saddles with cats and dogs. It's a remake of Blazing Saddles with cats and dogs. Like, what? What? Huh? What? Huh? What? Huh? What? Huh? What? Huh? What? 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 Why? 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 Meow. I just can't explain how weird this is to me as a concept. I had a little uh, devil's lettuce in my body, and when it hit me what this movie was about, I freaked out in the theater. But speaking of lettuce, if you follow me on Twitter, you'd see that sometimes I make a late night snack that is um not the most appetizing or appealing to the eye. And since it's the new year, I decided that needs to change, and I'm going to cook more for myself. And with HelloFresh, I can make that into a reality. You see, besides being sponsored by them right now, I have used HelloFresh in the past a lot, and every time it has been a wonderful experience. The meals are super easy to cook with simple to follow instructions for anyone looking to learn how to cook or just get better at it. It's a great way to cut back on expensive takeout that I am far too guilty of. And instead, you can have fresh ingredients delivered to your door every week. I mean, look at me making this restaurant quality meal from start to finish. I didn't have to leave my house and deal with annoying winter shoppers or anything. Whether it be chicken, pork, steak, burgers, or tacos, you can find varied and delicious recipes that will make you feel like a five-star chef every week. I genuinely can't express how much I love to use HelloFresh and recommend it to family, friends, everyone I know. You can use my link in the description or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGNICKJAN21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. That's a great deal in my eye. And once you sign up, my description will live update the count and, and go up. Look at that. Look at that. He, look at that. The number will go up. Isn't that fun? So just click the link in my description and use code POGNICKJAN21 and start cooking up some yummy yummy food with HelloFresh. Now back to the video. This movie for me is the worst thing to come out last year. It's a movie so jarringly bad I just can't really explain how I feel about it. It feels like a ripoff, a knockoff, a cheap low budget scam that you have to legally download from a different country that you never heard of. But instead, this is a real movie promoted by real humans. I mean there's billboards everywhere for this movie, this fake looking movie. I've driven by these and nearly gotten in car accidents because I just couldn't believe my eyes. Apparently the production behind this movie is very messy. It has been in the works for nearly a decade now, constantly switching between animation studios that have long since shut down. Eventually the final studio to pick it up and release it pretty much just salvaged whatever they could and finished it to release it last year. And well, yeah, it feels like a salvaged movie. This movie does boast a very large celebrity voice cast though, all of who sound like 
garbage. Samuel L. Jackson as this one fat cat, he's like okay until his audio starts sounding really bad and I'll get to that in a second. Mel Brooks, the Blazing Saddles guy, is also in this. My guy is literally 96 years old. I mean, it's a miracle he could still talk, I guess. Ricky Gervais plays the villain and he sucks. He just, he really sucks. He, he's just awful. And then you have Michael Sarah as the main dog, Hank. Michael Sarah voicing a dog. Michael Sarah dog. Michael Sarah is Hank. Michael Sarah is Hank. Michael Sarah is Hank. He's Michael Sarah as a dog. He's Michael Sarah dog. Michael Sarah dog. Michael Sarah dog. All the performances here are phoned in. No, I mean actually phoned in. They recorded all of the audio for the cast remotely due to the pandemic, and rather than outfitting them with private sound booths or good audio equipment to make recording remotely actually like a good thing, it just sounds like they all hopped in a Zoom call and just recorded that. Basically, it just sounds like they called Michael Sarah on a random Tuesday and had him record all of his lines through a dang blue snowball. I swear at one point in the movie you can actually hear someone opening a bag of chips in the background. It's that bad. It is the worst quality of audio recordings I have ever heard in a movie that I had to pay for to see in a movie theater. I mean at some point they ran out of laughs for Samuel L. Jackson's character and started reusing it with slightly different pitches to his laugh that make it sound so robotic and gross. Just listen to this. Listen to this. Got you again. Ah, 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 ah. That's in a multi-million dollar animated movie that I paid for. I paid for this! I paid for this! Why did I pay for this, dude? Why? But besides the awful sound quality, just look at the animation, the lighting, the awkward moments, the set design. It is downright horrendous. Everything about it is horrendous. What are these character designs? Tell me, what are these character designs? Please, someone tell me. What does this design portray about this character? Or this one? 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 Did any of those, any of those characters stick in your mind as a design that you wish to see more of? Did any of those seem like an intriguing design that would accompany a good animated movie or a story? The answer is no. I, I, I wasn't really looking for an answer. It's just straight up no. But speaking of story, let's take a look at the story. I mean, there really isn't much of it. There really isn't. It's a nothing movie. Just a warning to everyone. It is a nothing movie. Now, the intro of the movie is pretty okay. It's differently animated, sort of like the Kung Fu Panda intro. This part is the only okay-ish part about the movie. The animation actually feels fluid and vibrant. Someone worked their dang butts off for this intro just for it to instantly cut to these ugly, ugly textures. Ah, 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 ah. We then get to see some little hints at meta humor, which is pretty prevalent throughout the whole movie. Where did that come from? The title department. It tries to capitalize on the satirical meta nature of Blazing Saddles, but instead in just a much lazier and unfunny way. It's so awkward and so ill-timed, feeling very disconnected from the point of the joke that it's trying to make. And I think the issue is that it could actually be funny sometimes, but the animation and the direction of how they play out just dampers the execution each time. So we then get to see all these cats, and in this cat village, and there's bad and good cats. We start by seeing the bad cat, the Ricky Gervais cat, the villain. He's, he's the villain of the movie. He's getting some things done because he wants to be hailed as the next Shogun in the village or whatever. It turns out that Ricky Cat is making a giant toilet and when he sit on it, he wants to be able to like look at pretty things when he sits on a toilet. But instead, he sees this village of other cats, okay? And so he sends a bunch of bandits off to arrive at that town, literally spawning in before our very eyes. Ew, ew, what is that? Ew! There's a samurai there to defend him, but he just chickens out and runs away. There's a small kid who wants to find a new samurai, an actual good one to defend them. They asked the Shogun, played by Mel Brooks, and uh, 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 why do you look like that? Uh. It turns out that Ricky Cat and Mel Cat are actually friends, but little does Mel know that I've seen this movie before. And spoiler, Ricky Cat is, he's actually a bad person. Like, watch out, man, watch out. He's, he's not a good guy. He's not good. We then meet Michael Sarah Dog. Yes, it's Hank. Michael Sarah Dog. Michael Sarah Dog. Yay. Michael Sarah Dog is about to be executed. Oh, no, executed. But who else will play Hank if Michael Sarah is executed? No, no one else can play Hank like him. This cannot be. But don't worry, Hank escapes like using dog tactics, like digging a hole. I wish he digged in my hole. You know what I'm talking about? Sorry, sorry. That, that was weird. That was weird. I promise I'm not attracted to Michael Sarah dog Hank. I, 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 I promise. Hank is about to be executed for real this time until Ricky Cat has a realization to recruit him as a new samurai and use him for his own personal gain. Hank goes to town excited to defend it and be a good samurai, but everyone there instantly hates him because he's a dog. Now this is a direct 
direct beat for beat recreation of the scene from Blazing Saddles, where they're all disgustingly racist <laughs> and called a new seraph a bunch of slurs and almost kill him. Yeah, screw, screw all of that. Let's recreate that scene with cats and dogs and swap the sheriff for a samurai. Yep, a movie about literal racism, racism. watered down <laughs> to cats and dogs. Amazing idea for a movie. Who, who would have thought about that? Not me, that's for sure. Not, not many people. I don't think anyone would have ever thought to make this except for the people behind it for some reason. It's so funny that Mel Brooks is in this movie and I honestly give him props for it. When he first heard the idea of this movie, he's like, that's a crazy idea. Let's do it. And so he's literally in this movie as a joke, as a joke. He got paid to be in a movie based off of his movie as a joke at 96 years old. I just wonder if anyone else that made this movie was in on the joke like he was because it doesn't really feel like they were. Hank goes to get samurai training from an old samurai, Samuel L. Jackson cat samurai guy. The next 20 minutes or so of the movie is just a training montage fit with cat jokes and dog jokes galore. Wow, it's so exciting and I'm foaming at the mouth. But then it's time to use those skills by fighting the big fat cat sumo cat cat from the posters and besting him in his own goofy Michael Sarah ways. The Ricky cat guy is proud of him and takes him to show how good it is working for him and listening to all of his orders, but all of that turns out to be phony just so he can keep him distracted so he can attack the village behind the scenes. Whoa, 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 oh, oh no. The town is pretty much destroyed completely this time, making Hank angry. And trust me, you don't want to make Hank angry. You, you don't want to make Hank angry. Never make Hank angry. Hank then sets out to save everyone and destroy all of the bad cats. This is where all the hard training finally pulls off. Look at him, flying through the air, fighting for the people he cares about. He's fearless, he's strong, he's incredible. Go Hank, go! Go Hank, go! Save the day! Go Hank, go! Go Hank, go! Michael Sarah Dog and Ricky Cat then have a very unfunny showdown on top of a toilet until Ricky Cat drowns. Dang, rest, rest in piss. Like actually, actually rest in piss. Day is saved and Hank is loved as a samurai and racism <laughs> is ended. I guess. Yippee. And that's Pause of Hank, Legend of Fury, whatever, man. Bad movie, b movie bad. You know the deal. This movie is just strange. It's a movie that honestly never should have been made. I'm just gonna say it. The stories of its production being so rocky, it just seemed like a sign for this movie to become a piece of lost media and forgotten. But no, these people really took a shambling corpse and strung it together for the most pointless movie of 2022. It's not the very worst thing ever made, but it's definitely up there for me. Maybe sometimes it's okay to just let things die. With this movie being so cursed to make for so long, I think life would have been a lot better for them not to dedicate resources and time to making this lame, dumb, and ugly movie. The only good thing to come out of it is Michael Sarah's hilariously awkward performance as Hank the dog. Michael Sarah as a dog is truly the weirdest feeling I'll never be able to describe. Something about his voice performance, the design of its character, the whole package just feels so weird. It's Michael Sarah as a dog. Michael Sarah dog. Michael Sarah dog. Michael Sarah dog. Michael Sarah dog. And that's really something to think about. Anyways, thanks for listening.